Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here. Today I'm profiling the 1976 Topps football set. Part of my uh, 76 uh, profile weekend where I'm doing football, baseball, and hockey. And this is, uh, again, picking the 18 cards that I've selected to represent um, what I think are the best cards in the set. And I built these sets a while ago, so sometimes Hall of Famers get added and whatnot. And, and there's a lot of uh, Hall of Famers in football that will not be represented in my sets. And in some instances, I pick players that are not Hall of Famers, as you'll see in here with uh, Harvey Martin and uh, Ed Tuttle Jones. And um, what I like about this design is it didn't have as many action shots as other years did, but it's a very clean design, I think. Uh, the cards present very well. A lot of nice portrait shots, similar to the 60 top set I just profiled. Um, I like how it has the big football um, in the bottom left corner with the team name in the center. And um, I like how the all-pro cards, you see the blue for the AFC. And then here's the red all-pro cards for the NFC. I always thought the footballs looked like watermelons when I was kids, so I always called this the watermelon uh, set uh, as when I was little. Um, but I, again, think it's a, a nice design, uh, shows very well. So let's go through and look a little closer at some of the cards. Uh, here's Terry Bradshaw, a uh, year after winning the Super Bowl um, in 75 when they beat the Cowboys. And right next to him is uh, Harvey Martin. This is his rookie card. Again, as I mentioned, he's not a Hall of Famer. But he was a, an outstanding defensive end for his time. In 77, he was the NFL Defensive Player of the Year, the Super Bowl MVP, and a first-team All-Pro as the Cowboys won the Super Bowl that year, beating the Denver Broncos. Um, he was unofficially credited with uh, 20 or 23 sacks, I guess, depending on what records you look at. Sacks were not an official stat until 1982. Um, it was believed that he had 114 sacks in his career after he retired in 1983. Uh, his career ban began in 73, but he didn't get a rookie card into 76, which in football, as I've mentioned in other videos, was quite common. Uh, but what I like uh, um, about Harvey Martin was that he just had those long arms, and he was just a, a phenomenal uh, defensive end, just a, a never-give-up type pass rusher that I always respected. Uh, he was also the first Super Bowl MVP to die. He died of uh, cancer in 2001 at 51 years old. The second MVP to die was Bart Starr. So it's uh, quite a year, few years in between when those two died uh, for Super Bowl MVPs. And he was a co-MVP that year with uh, Randy White for that Super Bowl. And here we have Franco Harris. Second year, Dan Fouts. And then Lynn Swan. Was showing an All-Pro in 1975. Uh, Lynn Swan only made three tops cards, 75, 76, and 77, then he disappears from the top sets. Uh, I believe he played until, I want to say 1983, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2001. He was a one-time first-team All-Pro, uh, two-time second-team All-Pro, four-time Super Bowl champion, all-1970s team member. He only had 336 catches, 5,462 yards, and 51 touchdowns, which is probably like three and a half seasons for a receiver today. Uh, but he was known much more for that. He transcended numbers. He was he had a lot of acrobatic catches, uh, played for a high-profile team. Uh, Swan credits uh, taking dance lessons as a youth with giving him the skills to be a good receiver. Uh, he, again, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2001, and he ran for governor unsuccessfully at Pennsylvania in 2006 only getting 40% of the vote. And then here's my uh, rookie card of Sweetness, Walter Payton. I'm very glad to have this card, and I'm glad I got it when I did. <laughs> so it's not real uh, cheap now. And there's the Randy White rookie. His nickname was Manster. Jack Lambert, he was the Defensive Player of the Year in 1976. Next to him is uh, Mean Joe Green, another great uh, Steelers defensive player. Bob Greasy, so All-Pro running back uh, O.J. Simpson, and uh, John Riggins and the Jets. And down here we have Captain America, Roger Staubach. And then here's the uh, snake, Kenny Stabler. 
He uh, led the Oakland Raiders to a 13-1 record in 1976, and they beat the Minnesota Vikings in the Super Bowl that year, 32-14. to Just a dominant Raiders team. Uh, I believe they won the championship game against the Steelers that year, 24-7. to So uh, certainly a deserving champion uh, team. They had to beat some good teams to get that Super Bowl title, like, like uh, most teams have to do, of course. Uh, he was a two-time first-team All-Pro, uh, All-70s team member. He's an NFL Offensive Player of the Year. In 1974, he was a two-time AFC Player of the Year, and um, he was uh, known as much for his on-field exploits as he was for his off-field exploits. I read that in his 1986 autobiography, Snake, he said the monotony of uh, training camp was so oppressive that without the diversions of whiskey and women, those of us who were wired for activity and no more than six hours sleep a night might have gone berserk. Stabler told stories of drunk Raiders, teammates pointing guns at him, and, and one time he had to bail a teammate out of jail who was wearing nothing but blue cowboy boots and a Super Bowl ring. And they said that they are the only pro team that traveled with its own uh, bail bondsman, he said. Um, and Stabler unfortunately died in 2015 of cancer, and um, he was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2016, which I think is a travesty that it took him that long. Um, he was probably the fourth best quarterback of the 70s after Staubach, uh, Tarkington, and Bradshaw. I'd put him right in, the, in line with Greasy, who got in several years before him. Uh, they, they certainly um, you know, were similar caliber quarterbacks, and it's a shame uh, that it took him that long to get in and he didn't live to see it. Uh, just a great player. There we got Jack Ham, Ed Tutal Jones. I believe he left football in 79 to have a boxing career, and then he came back uh, and played with the Cowboys right up to the uh, Jimmy Johnson era, I believe, right, right in the beginning of the Jimmy Johnson era. And then uh, Larry Zonka. What's interesting about this card is he played in the World Football League the year before. He's got his Dolphin jerseys on here, and here he's playing for the Giants. And if you flip the card over, it shows his WFL stats, which was kind of cool that they did that back then. And then uh, finishing up with all-pro uh, quarterback from that year, Fran Tarkenton. Again, I think one of the top three quarterbacks of the 70s with uh, Staubach and Bradshaw. A great running, throwing quarterback. So here it is. 1976 Tops Football. Appreciate you watching my video. And have a great night.